what we're going to do now is take what we've learned about events and the previous chapters, and we're going to build a pretty sophisticated effect. And what we're going to do is build an image rotator that has a nice fading effect in it. So before I show you the code, let me bring up the finished image rotator in the browser. So if you look in the exercise files folder under the effects chapter, you'll see a couple of files. There's the image rotator start and image rotator finished. So let me just bring this up in the browser. And you can see that what's happening is over a couple of seconds, we have a nice little image slideshow where the images are fading from one to the next, and they're just doing this in a circular pattern. So there's four images, and each one is fading on top of the next. Let me bring this up in Firefox 2 so you can see that it works there. Bring that up in Firefox browser. Okay, same idea. So you can see that it's slowly fading across the images. What I've done is built a cross browser image rotator, and there's no plugins involved here. This is all just JavaScript and jQuery. So let's see how that works. What I'm going to do is bring up the start version of the file in my editor. And let's go to the design view really quick. You can see here in the design view I've got an image. There's actually more than one image. I've positioned them so that they're all stacked on top of each other. So let's go to the source view and you can see that. So here is the images that we're going to rotate. So a couple of things. First, everything is contained inside a parent div. And the parent div I've got here is named photo show. And then I've got four divs inside that. Each one of those divs contains an image. And the first div has a class applied to it named current. So you can see that inside each one of these divs, there's an image pointing to a path. And each one has a height and a width. What I've done here is to find these four images, and let's take a look at the styles applied to each. The photo show div itself has a height and width applied, and that matches the height and width of the images that I'm rotating. And then the divs inside the parent div are positioned absolutely. So that's causing all the images to stack up underneath each other. And by default, I'm giving each image a z-index of 0. So they're going to be underneath at the bottom of the stack. Then I've got two other style sheets, one called previous and one called current. And the current style sheet basically has a z-index of 2. So whichever div has that style sheet applied is going to be the one that is on top of all the other images. And you can see that that's this div, and that image is inside the div. So this one will be on the top of everybody else. And then we have a, another style sheet named previous, and that has a z-index of 1. So whichever div has this style sheet will be directly under this guy right here. Now, that's not initially assigned. We're going to assign that dynamically as part of the rotation effect. So now that we've got all the content set up, let's take a look at the code. So I've got my jQuery library included. And what I need to do now is write the code that sets up the image rotator. So what I'm going to do is write a function that executes when the page gets loaded. And this is the jQuery document ready event. And all I'm going to do is call set interval on a function I'm going to write called rotate images. And I'm going to have that run every two seconds, so 2,000 milliseconds. OK, so now I need to write the function to rotate the images. There's a couple things we need to do. What we're going to do is figure out which photo is the current one and which photo is the next one. And what we're going to do is take whatever the current photo on top is, we're going to move it underneath the photo that comes next. So that's going to be the image that fades up. So we're going to move the current photo underneath the next one, set the next photo's opacity to 0, and then have it fade up in front of the photo that's in front of it. So I'm going to have a variable here named cur photo. And I'm going to use jQuery to get a reference to whichever photo is current. So what I'm going to do is look for inside the photo show div, I'm going to look for whatever div has the current style sheet applied to it, because that's the current photo. Then I'm going to look for the next photo. 
And again, I'm going to use jQuery for that. So to get the next photo, recall from our selector and retrieving content section that there's a function called next. So I'm going to say curphoto.next. And this will get the next sibling after whatever this current div is here. So if this div is current, then the next div is this guy. And if this div is current, then this is the next guy. If this div is current, there is no next, right? You can see that we're at the end of the div list. We have to handle that condition. So if that's the case, then the jQuery result that comes back from the next function will be of length zero. We can check that condition. So we say if oh, next photo dot length, in other words, there's nothing in the jQuery result set is equal to zero, then what we need to do is go back to the top of the loop. And to do that, remember using jQuery, we're going to say, well, next photo is equal to, and what we're going to do is simply get the first div that's inside the photo show parent div, which will be this guy right here. So that's how we're going to get the looping behavior. So now we figured out which div is current and which one is next. We need to do the CSS animation that causes the opacity to animate. So what we're going to do is tell the current photo to remove the class that is current because it's no longer the current photo. And we're going to add the previous class. What's going to happen now is the current class is going to come off, previous is going to go on, so it's going to drop down one order in the z-index. And we're going to tell the next photo that we're going to set its CSS property, make its opacity 0, because that's what we're going to animate up. The div will start out invisible. Then we're going to set the next photo to be the current photo. So now this guy is going to move on top. And remember, he's invisible. So his opacity is 0 is now on top. But now we need to animate it up from opacity 0 to opacity 1.0. So it will fade up in front of the image that's behind it. So we'll write animate. And we're going to write a custom animation function here. And the animation function will simply animate the opacity up to 1.0 over a duration of one second. And then we're going to have a callback function. And the callback function will simply tell the current photo to remove its previous class. So now there's no more class set on it. It's back at the bottom of the stack along with the other photos. So that is pretty much all we need to do. So just a quick review. We find out which photo's current. We get the one that's next in line. If we're at the end of the list, we loop back to the beginning. Whichever photo is current, we remove the current class and make it drop down in the z-index. Then we take whatever's next, set it to be invisible, and make it on top. Now that it's on top, all we have to do is animate the opacity up to fully visible over a second. So it'll appear to fade up in front of the image that it's in front of. And then we tell the photo that was directly behind the next photo to drop down at the bottom of the z-index. And since we're calling set interval, this function will be called every two seconds. So this will happen over and over and over again. So let's save. And what we're going to do now is go back out to the browser. So let's bring up the image rotator start in the browser. And you can see that every two seconds, we're just changing which photo is on top and animating the opacity up. And that's how you build an image rotator with some smooth animation using jQuery and JavaScript.